one last thing regarding retiming i mentioned that you know it can be seen uh, that pipelining by itself can be seen as a special case of retiming how do we do that? Let's say that we have a feed forward graph, right? one without any sort of feedback uh, edges over here. Now, how do I think of this? How do I think of pipelining this particular graph? Right? One way that I can think about it is, what does it mean to say that A is a source? Right? Effectively, the implication of saying that A is a source is that it is free to execute at any point in time. Right? I have no restrictions on when A can execute. Okay. Another way of looking at it is to say that I have some kind of magical source of initial tokens or you know something starting values for A, right? Which I have indicated by this green line and that green uh, node, which is marked as source. And I'm actually saying that you know on that edge from that source to A, there are an infinite number of delays. What does it mean to say there are an infinite number of delays? It basically means that there are, you know, the original source that decides when you can execute the first iteration has an infinite number of initial values, meaning that at any point in time you can start. It doesn't really matter how much you delay it forward or backward. Okay. And if I assume that this is the case, right, effectively what I'm saying is the, as far as that source is concerned, it doesn't really matter when in reality A, B, and C are executed. Now, do a retiming around A. Okay. What does it look like? Uh, or you know, before doing that, let's also assume that you know, what does it mean to say that C is a sink? Assume that it has some kind of thing which has infinite delays going into something else, a uh, sink node, right? Now, interestingly, one of the things you can realize over here is you know, I could group both of these together and end up with one big pool of an infinite set of delay tokens, right? Effectively, what I'm saying is A can execute anytime. Whenever A wants to execute, it borrows one token from this pool, proceeds, and whenever C uh, has executed, it basically dumps one token back into this sink. Okay. The reason I'm drawing it this way, in fact, if you look at it, the original analysis of retiming synchronous circuits sort of does you know, uh, use the concept of having some kind of a universal source or sync, which from uh, which allows different uh, elements in the graph to start or uh, uh, complete. Okay, but this is more just a sort of thought experiment. You don't really need to have anything physically there. What does that mean when I now try to do retiming? I can now put a boundary around A. And if I do this retiming, effectively what I'll do is I'll do a minus one on the edge coming into A plus one on the edge going out of A to B. Okay. And similarly, I can do another retiming around C. And what I'll do is over here, I'll do plus one on the edge coming into C and minus one on the edge going out of C. Now, infinity minus one is the same thing, infinity, it's unchanged, right? So for all practical purposes, I can just basically get rid of that and say those the source and the sink still have infinite delays on them, right? And what I end up with is ABC as a pipeline version of my original graph. Okay. So this is the context, uh, con, uh, you know, the way in which you can sort of visualize pipelining as a special case of retiming. You don't, in other words, need to analyze it separately. Having said that, pipelining is an easy enough concept to understand and so widely applied in a lot of contexts that you know, people just sort of uh, study pipelining. I mean, the first natural thing is to introduce pipeline by itself because it's easy to understand and easy to sort of apply in a lot of contexts as well. Okay, so, you know, where is retiming used? Typically what happens is that, you know, the original, like I said last time, the original sort of uh, place where it was proposed was in pure synchronous digital circuits, right? And one of the things that can be done over there is simply to improve the critical path, right, the clock period. And what you will find is that those of you who have used, uh, you know, either Synopsys, Cadence, uh, or even the Xilinx uh, FPGA tools, uh, you will find that very often, you know, while looking through the reports, you will see that some retiming has been applied somewhere and so on, right? There will be something saying that, oh, retiming for improving clock period and so on. And it's precisely the same kind of analysis that's being done out there also, right? It does a critical path analysis 
finds out the longest, uh, you know, what are long chains of uh, combinational logic and sees whether registers can be moved around in order to break the combinational chains, right? So it is not doing pipelining. In other words, it's not sort of introducing new registers where nothing else existed. It is basically taking existing registers and moving them either before or after the existing combinational logic. Now, the other thing that you might have uh, realized is that, you know, uh, if I have like the example that I showed, right, two incoming edges, three outgoing edges, in such a situation, I basically have the possibility that by doing an appropriate retiming, I can either increase or decrease the total number of registers in the circuit. Okay. Now, registers themselves occupy area, right, which means that I could potentially think about even reducing the area of the circuit by doing an appropriate kind of retiming. Right? Now, this of course does not really apply to FPGAs because over there the registers are already available and you gain nothing by you know reducing the number of registers in your design. In ASICs, sometimes it may be helpful but it's of limited use because typically area itself is sort of the secondary constraint especially these days. Power is going to be a bigger problem. Okay. On the other hand, what we will be looking at as we move forward is going to be looking at the same thing in the context of general data flow graphs, right? So like I said, just general synchronous uh, or static data flow graphs. And uh, we'll be looking at it specifically in the context of how you can apply scheduling, right? And what we are saying is that once again, the same ideas, right? By you, know, you can use this retiming in order to improve the critical path. The other thing, as we'll see later, is that in some cases, even the schedulability, what I mean by schedulability is, can this actually be, can all these operations be fit within some number of clock cycles, right? Or do I need to do something else? That schedulability can be improved in certain cases by doing appropriate retiming. 